Hi there everyone, it's Lucy here at Franknet Sewing Machines. I'm the shop manager and um, we're going to be going through a bit in a bit more detail, as you've asked, uh, with the Juki um, NX7 Kiri, or however we pronounce that bit. But um, I've been having a play this morning. It's a beautiful machine and uh, there's loads of different features on here. So we're going to run through some of the basics and then get into a bit of the detail on the screen and what it can do. Um, First of all, it does come with a table. We're just going to look at some of the accessories. This is the lovely wide table that is kind of inclu included with the machine. You don't actually get in the slide-on accessory box. It is just the, the table and then you remove that for the free arm, which is also a good size. Um, let's pop that back on for now. It's nice and easy to come on and off, it's great. Um, We've got the knee lift attached as well at the moment that I'm going to demonstrate but let's have a look at the threading as well first of all because we've got the um, a really great needle threader on here too, really easy to get going. So up at the top here it's all numbered and we're just going to follow it around. So round that number one, follow it through to number two, following these arrows down the bottom and then up into four and down again. So the threading path's fairly standard into number six and then we'll see here we've got a number seven so pop it up into there and this is the same as the needle threaders that are on the um, DX series as well trim it off there and then we've got the final lever here I must not have had that in the correct position so bear with me a sec let's just get that down is my needle in the highest position it should be yep there we go there we are that's how it should work creates that loop out the back for you. Setting the bobbin is also pretty much similar as the, to the DX series does again. So um, it's a drop-in bobbin style. So it's not uh, any bigger than the standard bobbins. It's, it is the standard 15K bobbin that we see in quite a few machines of the Juki range. Um, and so yeah, again, we've got a numbered system, just pops in there underneath that first metal part and around number two and number three and again we've got a trimmer as well to keep that all in place so if we wanted to bring up the bobbin thread we can do our needle up and needle down so we've got all that functionality in here I have actually got the hover thing set at the moment so it's there's all sorts of up and down but it's really fast actually at the way it does move up and down which is nice sometimes there can be a bit of a delay with hover heights but this is actually really quick and the knee lift is actually all um, totally electronic it's obviously a sensor based system instead of a mechanical system so I can like kind of raise it up a little bit all the way down a bit down all the way it, it's really quite sensitive so that that's nice to use as you can see very quick which is good when you're just wanting to get on and quilt or dress make or bag make this machine can pretty much handle it all I'd say we've got an other physical features um, the built-in dual feed that is obviously quite a big pull on this this is um, not many machines have got this feature and I've been testing it out it's been working really well on kind of quilting um, fabrics as well so if I raise up the foot it's at the back here so I've got to bring this down so this for any of the feet that have got a bit cut out in the back you can use this with but it does actually give you a message on the screen if um, it's not suitable for a particular stitch it pops up and says to remove it when if it's not suitable for that particular stitch so we bring this down and it clips into the back down there and that's it so that's engaged with the feet speaking of feet we've got a lovely box full of tricks so um all of the ones with the gap in the back you can use with the dual feed so that includes a patchworking foot a quarter of an inch foot with a guide the straight stitch foot because you can convert this to be a, a true straight stitch machine and so they all come with um, the, and the, the standard zigzag as well and they're all numbered and lettered so you know exactly which one to be putting on as the machine does also give you prompts as to which one to use. The other feet that we've got in here are the uh, zipper foot, a blind hemming foot, um, like a satin stitch foot for decorative stitches, the open toe embroidery 
and a overcasting as well. Um, obviously there isn't a walking foot because we've got this built-in part section so we don't need the separate walking foot uh, and then we've got the massive buttonhole foot which we did touch on um, when we opened the box in our previous video so we can have a, a more detailed look at that as well. Um, you're getting included four bobbins in total I've wound one on and popped it in the machine um, also getting in here a guide that goes into the foot holder really easily so I'll pop that down here so the guide into the top of the foot holder and then you just push it in and then you can move it to wherever you want it to be for that perfect kind of straight line quilting guide so we can leave that on for now um, Let's have a look at the screen. I'm going to put that down so I'll give my knee a rest. I'm just going to manoeuvre over. <laughs> We've got um, a touch pen that comes with it to keep this kind of nice and clean and you can be also quite precise with the touch pen. Um, the setup is completely different to how we've seen it before so we've got here on the right hand side all of our stitches stitch um, styles that's all different folders and you just press it to to access the different folders and then you've got a complete visualization see that's one stitch you can't use with this down so let me just bring that up so that i can access all of them for you there we go um, so it gives you that prompt which is really handy. There's loads of safety features on here for, for um, so you won't be able to break a needle or but you've just got to tell the machine what you're doing. Um, so that's kind of your folder system. Um, all down this side you just kind of navigate through them to find exactly what it is you want to do. You can expand it out as well to get a big, bigger and better idea and also you've got everything listed up in the top as well which is you don't normally get with a machine that's got all of that information there so you can see it all there too. Bring that in. So notice that you've got two tabs at the top here so this selection here with the different folders is very much just for selecting individual stitches. Um, with the second tab here this is your combination mode so it has its own section if you like its own tab and then you can go through folders and actually combine stitches together so it'll give me one of those one of those and this is also where you can do your lettering as well so you've got um, four different um, English fonts and some Japanese characters and um, to be able to to write on screen and it's handy because you can open again opening this out which is very similar to um, some other brands that we've seen and mm -hmm. so uh, welcome back we just had a quick break to delete some stuff off of the memory card but we're back on track now so I was just showing you about the um, lettering and how to combine letters and also designs together to make your own stitches so once you've got this this pane expanded it really is very easy to um, see exactly what you're going to be writing so for example we can do an F and an N and then we can get our lowercase along the bottom here uh, and U T T for F note sewing machines uh, T -T. so it's really easy to see exactly what you've got on there and um, you've got all your additional characters all sorts of umlauts and things as well and that goes for all the fonts they all come with an upper and a lower case so yeah it's really um, very straightforward you can then see exactly where you are on screen with, with your stitching and kind of scroll through the different letters on using the um, to scroll through different characters on the this section here and then if you did just want to go back to normal sewing then you just top, tap on that tab go back to what you're doing sewing wise but this whatever you been, have been doing in combination mode is still there so you can flick between the two quite easily so that's kind of the right hand side of the screen oh there is also a saving feature as well sorry yes down here with this um, underneath the character um, icon you've got a folder and so if we touch that we're actually able to save something so if it's like a word or something a greeting that you write quite often you can put it into a folder so I've already put something in number one earlier when I was practicing so I'll pop that into number two um, and then recall that whenever you like and similarly you can bin things as well from there so I can open up that's what I've saved earlier on hello and then I can say yep yeah, I want to bin that so you can always keep it up to date quite easily there's no massive menus to go into it's really it's all there it's ready to go 
And this no at the bottom, <laughs> just so you know, <laughs> is a, it's actually a really handy reference because I thought, well, what's no mean? Is it just like a command? But it, it's actually short for number. So you can type in, if you can see a font on here on your screen, oh, well, sorry, not on screen, on the lid that you want to be using, you can actually then just type in directly the number of the, f of the um, stitch. It saves you scrolling through all of the actual folders to find it. So if I wanted uh, 366, I could do 366. And there we go, that's added in um, that stitch. It's popped it in kind of in the middle for me, but um, I, I know that it's, it's that one that I've selected. So it's a kind of a quick way to get around instead of searching through the folders, is having that reference chart there, which is quite handy. Okay, so back into the normal sewing mode. So if we move along the screen, we've got um, some settings here. So this is uh, like a sti stitch settings that you can do. Um, let me just get back to kind of a normal stitch. And so we can, um, we've got pattern elongation, we've got tapering, we can flip the stitch, we've got a darning program built into there as well. So there's lots of things you could do. You've also, if you were to select buttonholes as well, you've got, um, if I select that one and then go into the settings, I've got buttonhole adjustments here so I can make it smaller, I can make it wider um, for the, the gap in between, which you've got a lot of control over. Um, next down there is um, the needle stop position. So at the touch of a button you can program the machine to stop with the needle up or down. You've also got, oh, it doesn't apply to that one, that's the thing, when you select something, if it doesn't apply to that stitch, then it kind of greys it out, so you can't even see it. So you can only really do settings that apply to the stitch you have selected at that time. So if I select the straight stitch, I can see the second icon down here, the floating foot, which is a really great feature that Juki have had for a number of years now. We can activate that there as well and we can set that pivot height um, for when we are going over thicker materials and it is also the, the pivot height for here. I had it set quite high at six, it's standard, is two, um, but I was so testing out some particularly thick materials earlier on and uh, so I had to have the, the height set a lot higher, but you can adjust that to whatever would work for the particular project that you're working on. Um, and then down there we've got the electronic control for the feed dogs so whether they are raised or lowered, and that's just a digital switch as well. Everything on here is electronically controlled, which is um, you know, really smooth operation. No uh, big levers to pull or press. It's l Everything's on the screen. Uh, so as we go along, we've got the stitch selection there. So if I select something, we've got that visualization on the screen, which is lovely. Um, you can, if you make adjustments, you can see exactly what it's going to look like. And that's also where you get the foot indicator as well, at the top. Um, that's saying to use C, which is the overcasting foot, because that is an overcasting stitch. So um, pay attention to that if uh, for a particular task. Moving on from there, we've got our stitch width. Um, sorry, needle position, stitch width and stitch length. And then also got a bobbin sensor built in on here, but you have to tell it about how much you have of on your bobbin. So I can see at the minute, I reckon I've got about 30%. So if I actually um, increase, if I turn it on, and then I'll be able to increase that to about 30, it'll then warn me when I'm running out, when I'm running low on bobbin. And um, do I set that? No. I thought it would set it. You can set it to be um, full, obviously if you're winding on a full bobbin you just tell it that you've put a fresh bobbin in. Um, there we go, I'll well, set it to be 100%. I'll have a look at that one and get back to you with some more detailed information on how to set that if you know you've only got a partially wind bobbin. Um, further on at the other side of the screen we've got the tension at the top um, which is again fully adjustable. Uh, it, it changes depending on what stitch you've got selected as well, which is um, something you do get in high-end models, and that is constantly being adjusted to suit the stitch that you're doing. You've got here the... Actually, I'm not entirely sure what exactly, because with the arrow up on the other side, that's to do with the... Um, oh, that's foot pressure, that's what that one is, sorry, that makes sense, because with the arrow underneath it, it's about the pivot height, so with that one, it must be the, the actual foot pressure itself. And again, that's, does that adjust? So that seems to be a stand, set it to standard, um, and then it'll be up to you for your different materials whether you wanted to adjust that. One control that's brand new, um, that I've never seen on a machine before, is the dual feed speed adjustment. 
So this um, little foot here with the big jaggedy teeth indicates the um, additional jewel feed. And you can actually make that increase or decrease in speed for your particular project. So for thicker materials, uh, this is going to be very interesting to see how well it can actually avoid that slippage. But it's an additional, um, brand new feature that I've never seen before on a machine. Something that we um, will do some more testing on and find out exactly how useful it can, can be. Um, you can tell the machine whether you've got twin needles on. You can program the uh, thread cutting to happen at certain points. Um, so that's like whether you want it to do a forwards and backwards stitch or a stitching on the spot for the different um, needle stop positions. Also using the scissors. So at the minute we haven't got any of these automatic features selected because you can operate them using the keys and also the foot control is programmable as well. We've got this double-sided foot control which we saw when we were getting out of the box. So um, obviously one side is for our standard speed and then the other is for can be programmed for thread cutting or tying off or both. But we'll look at that now. Um, in our settings here. So this is more in-depth machine settings as opposed to just the stitch settings which are on our main screen. If I go to the foot control here, this is where I can program it to do different things or just have it off. So it can do reverse, um, stitch on the spot, needle up and down, um, back stitch, lowering, raising and lowering the presser foot or, or snipping the threads. So we can actually select any of those to, to, for it to do what we want it to do. I like it to trim the threads because I know exactly where I am then. Setting completed. Within here, there's lots of other information about darning programs, tension, speed, all machine settings that you can do, noises, um, brightness settings that you might want to, if you want to restore it to factory settings. And it does actually have a firmware section as well, so this machine may be one that we um, get firmware upgrades for. Actually, if we just have a quick look, do we have? Yeah, we've got the USB um, port, so it would be um, a case of if there was anything that needs to be upgraded then you can actually do a, um, a software update on there as well. In the information you've actually got quite a, a lot of onboard help, um, how to do winding the bobbin, lots of changing needles, feet, the dual feed function, you know little, vid little pictures on how exactly to engage that. I quite like the fact that the screen's like the dark, the the light on the dark. It's quite a different look. It makes it, it feels very, feels very high end. It looks really nice. It's really easy to see, very easy to read everything that's on there. Um, a very clear system, and especially with all of these lights as well along the um, massive 13-inch arm, it's a very uh, clear machine to use. We go back there. Just put on a standard stitch there and I'll show you how it runs. I'll go on some quilting stuff, some of this quilt sandwich I made earlier, and um, engage the dual feed. Let's bring that down. So that automatically brings, brought the foot up to, for me to engage that feed, which is quite handy. So if I start here, use my needle to bring my foot all the way down. always sound louder on camera but it's really quite nice and quiet so I've got this set to that hover height at the moment so as soon as I stop the needles up sorry the foot is up and um, means I can pivot, move this around as much as I like and it will automatically lower with you just pressing the presser foot as you've got that pivot set you don't have to bring the foot down again or use the knee lift you can just carry on And if you do want to use the knee lift to bring it this all the way up, um, say if I wanted to trim the thread, and then I can use my knee lift to make it raise all the way so it's really easy, it's got a massive clearance. You can get pretty thick items underneath this. Um, I can see it being very useful for um, dressmakers and quilters alike, to be honest. Now I've heard it's stitch, I thought I'd show you about the um, straight stitch function on here, because uh, we've got and a separate set of feed dogs 
and a separate needle plate. And this is um, brand new. We've never seen anything like this before. So uh, I've had a go doing it. I've had a practice. It's actually really easy to get to grips with. So um, I'll just take off the foot itself because that helps. Actually, some room. So you've, you get this tool in the box as well, which is indispensable actually. So you just. Uh, There we go. Take that off. And then you use this tool again. It does advise actually to turn the machine off when doing this, just to, um, or put the lock screen on, just to stop it from, um, you know, you pressing anything by accident. But using this, I'm going to wedge it underneath the front, twist it, and that pops off my needle clip. And then we've got our feed dogs here. And these literally lift up, and lift away. So I'll pop that all in that box there. And so then the straight set of feed dogs. You've got a little um, kind of screw that kind of marries up to this slit in, in the back of the feed dog here. And so once you've got that on, you just push it down and then uh, that's it, it's in place. And needle plate, straight stitch needle plate goes back on. And that's it. So if you want to come back around here, James, <laughs> on the screen <laughs> before I press OK, it's actually detected that I've got the straight stitch plate on. So basically it won't let me select anything now that is going to um, damage damage anything. So if I say yes, fine, check the presser foot, lovely. So that's now just set to single hole and we can see that here. So instead of having that wider aperture, it won't let us do anything now. Any stitches that you can't even look at certain things in folders it just won't let you select them because there's only so many stitches that you can do with the straight stitch on. So if I put the straight stitch foot onto here. Let's raise that all the way up so I can... Tighten that up. Lovely, and that's it. So now we're going to get lovely straight stitching with our straight stitch foot. And I can also bring down the, what do they call it? The smart feed, that's what Juki have called it. Um, and now I've got a straight stitch machine and the results are lovely. Um, button here as well that I can just touch and then I can hit my thread cutter. Everything on here is kind of speeded up it feels, it's very responsive. It all happens really quickly which is nice. And the stitch on there, lovely straight stitch. It's been a, it's been a pleasure to get to know this morning actually, trying, to, trying it out on all sorts of different fabrics and thicknesses of things as well. Um, I'm just saying, shall we get some thicker kind of upholstery style stuff like curtains, things like that. That's the kind of things we're going you can easily use this machine for. I'll just cut a bit off of here. So I should have had some ready shouldn't I really? But just as an example. So we may have the top part of a curtain and then we may also have some heading tape and then we might also have just another layer. Now it's pretty thick, this is getting on for when even squished together about five millimetres thick. So I will actually on here set my hover height to be higher, set that to about, to, to the maximum, to, to six I think because then, because um, if you don't do that, it makes a really weird noise. And so it took me a little while to figure that one out. But if we set that to there. This has got no problem going to do that. No worries whatsoever. You can see that the presser foot isn't actually 
bearing down heavily on the fabric. And I don't know what needle the, the machines come with, but it's managing it absolutely fine. And we can then go down very nice and smoothly and also back onto something that thick with the same kind of ease. It just does it. And it goes really fast. 1050, oh, ran out of bob top thread. That's one thing it doesn't have is a top thread sensor. But um, yeah, 1050 stitches per minute um, is the maximum speed on this machine. So we ran out of thread, so I'm just going to re-thread the machine, which means we get to have a look at the needle threader again, so why not? Um, around the top and down. Oh, remember to put your spool cap on. Always remember to use the appropriate size spool cap for your thread as well. And then into that needle threader. need to remember to put the needle in the right position. This one's not going to plan, is it? Let's make sure it's in the highest. There we go. And then I'm going to pop on the buttonhole foot because we said we would have a quick look at this as well. Um, the Juki buttonhole foot, it does seem to be the same kind of model that you get with the DX series. Um, so we've got this separate um, part here that can actually clamp the material in between to ensure an even feed. And that's what makes the Juki buttonhole really nice to use. You don't have to, you can actually take off that bottom section if, you didn't, if you'd rather not use it for a certain project. It just kind of clips off the bottom kind of just have to pull it off there so you can keep that bit separate so uh yes yeah, so this clips on like a normal foot does Oop. so i'm looking for that bar there Lowering it on and then we plug it in to the actual machine because once we've actually put our button in the back, which goes into this section here, like a kind of most automatic button holders, that's, it, it, it sends a signal to the machine to say how big it is. So we'll pop that in there, raise that up, and let's have a go on another section of this lovely curtain fabric. There we go. So on screen, I'm going to select, there's my little stylus. Um, we've got a really good range of buttonholes here actually, um, something for every occasion let's say, but one of the, uh, I don't know, so some of these are for stretch, let's use one of the more standard like, chunky keyhole ones, and um, this is when in our settings we can then have a look at this bit here so we can set it to be narrow, uh, wide or extra wide as the, uh, for the stitch width on there as well, um, for the gap, let's go for a medium sized one. Okay, um, feed dogs are engaged, so then it'll just be a case of uh, us going. lovely even without that bottom section perfect so we've got a really nice wide uh, aperture in there for maybe taking being able to fit a, a much chunkier button like for coats and things like that um, this button holder is lovely so that's about uh, all we've got time for today. If you've got any more questions on this machine though, I know there are a couple of things we might not have quite touched on yet, but we will go into the ruler work and everything um, maybe in a, in a separate video, so do look out for that because it's quite a separate task. But because um, it does come with the, the ruler foot as well. So it really does come with everything for everybody really. Um, yes, yeah, let us know if there's anything else you want to know about this machine. 
um, whether you need some more detail on the screen or uh, whether it's on the, the machine itself or the all important threading. Um, but yes, thanks for watching and I hope that you've uh, got something out of the video and do let us know if there's anything else that we can um, show you. And obviously it's here ready to demonstrate in store as well so if you are localish to Birmingham don't forget to pop by and we're happy to show you. Speak to you soon and bye for now.